Hello, welcome to a series of videos where we are going to be writing a novella using Claude from start to finish and documenting the whole thing on the channel. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, today we're going to be talking just specifically about the brainstorming and brainstorming with Claude. And uh, tomorrow you will be seeing another video doing the exact same thing with a different novella in ChatGPT. And so you'll be, if you watch the two together, you'll be able to kind of compare and contrast and see which one is better at brainstorming. The point of all this is, first of all, to get a lot of experience myself in testing these different tools and seeing where one is stronger than the other and for what, uh, but also just to um, get some novellas out there. I posted a video recently talking about how I was stopping my work on in an AI book that I had been writing because the idea wasn't really mine and I had lost interest in it. Well, this idea that we are going to be talking about today is my idea. And so I'm excited to get into that and seeing what we can get out of it. Um, but I will kind of just go through a few exercises here to show you what is possible with the brainstorming in Claude so that you can get a sense for different ways to brainstorm. Um, so let's go ahead and start with a prompt like, give me 20 high concept pitches. That's the phrase I use. I like to use a lot when I'm getting started, uh, but there are other ways to brainstorm as well for a noir fantasy adventure set in the 1920s. Okay. So it's given me a, a bunch of different options here. Down on his luck, private detective gets mixed up with a cabal of warlocks running an illegal speakeasy that's front for a demonic rit for demonic rituals. An exiled fey princess heating, hiding in the seedy underbelly of 1920 Chicago crosses paths with a cynical veteran of the Great War who now works as a PI. So it's definitely, it got my genre right. None of these so far look particularly interesting. So let's say, I'm going to push this a little bit more. Let's say, give me a list of the most popular books and movies Um, set in the 1920s with a noir feel to them. All right, so we've got The Great Gatsby, of course, Maltese Falcon, obviously. The Prestige, The Prestige. Chinatown, okay. Now, with that list in mind, Create a series of pitches using your original pitches mashed with ideas from the, the list of noir movies and books. And see if it can do that. I like to mash things up a bit when I am working with AI because it tends to produce a little bit more of an original idea. In this case, I'm picking very the pitches I asked for originally and the movies and books here are all very much in a similar vein, a similar genre, similar time frame. So it might not change things that much, but let's let's see. All right, so it gave me a couple others here. Um, I don't necessarily want to read through all of these right now, uh, mostly because uh, I'm not actually going to use any of these ideas. I'm just kind of demonstrating. Uh, so I'm just going to say, can you shorten each pitch to an exciting hook of 10 words or less. And try to do this because sometimes when you boil it down, um, the idea can actually get a little bit better. Relic Hunter clashes with mob and mummy cult, Black Dahlia, double murdered, magician, turned P.I. dives into 1920s Hollywood occult. P.I. investigates Zodiac echoing 
cult mergers in 1920 San Francisco. Vampire inf infiltrates Gatsby-esque millionaires. Dangerous occult circle. That's my favorite so far. <laughs> uh, mostly because I like the idea of meshing the great Gatsby with vampires. Historical fantasy noir with prohibition flappers and art deco style. Eh, okay. Uh, so you could continue on with this. Um, there are a lot of different ways to brainstorm ideas. But I do actually feel like most authors, and myself included, already have a lot of ideas. And we're really more interested in seeing how we can make those ideas take shape. So I'm going to just come out of that and say, here is a pitch for a novella that I'm writing. And let's see. I'll give it a roll. You are a best-selling author and developmental editor with years of experience. Now I'm doing all of this. This is what I would normally type into something like ChatGPT. Claude tends to be less literal when accepting the prompt. So often you can get unexpected results. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you're prompting Claude. Uh, all right, you are a best-selling author and developmental editor with years of experience. This novella will be about an older Sherlock Holmes who meets Tarzan after Tarzan has been reintroduced to quote unquote civilized society. It will involve the two of them meeting up for the first time and investigating a cult with Lovecraftian elements. Um, so that's the, the basic idea that I've got here. Um, and so now let's brainstorm because I have the initial germ of an idea, but I don't actually know what's going to happen in the plot. Can you give me a list of uh, possible plot... Mm, say possible and I'll just say plots and or plot twists that could evolve from such a premise I feel like I'm just typing really formally here let's see all right so it gave me a couple of ideas here I kind of like some of them this first one is okay Sherlock is hired by an aristocratic family to find their missing daughter who got involved with a mysterious cult he seeks out the now civilized Tarzan to help track her in the cult's jungle location. They discover the cult is summoning Lovecraftian entities. Um, I don't like all of that, but I like the idea of the missing daughter. That might make a good uh, inciting incident. Uh, but I actually realized as I was listing this out that I need a little bit more information about the setting here. So I'm just going to, I could look this up, but I'm just going to see if it knows this. How old would... Well, actually, let's start with Tarzan. Um, when was Tarzan born? And when do the events of the first Tarzan novel take place? All right. Born in 1888. Take place around 1909 to 1910. So he'd be in his mid-20s. Um, by the time Tarzan reunites with his cousin William Clayton in the later novel, The Return of Tarzan, Tarzan is about 25 years old. Okay. Age in the first novel, 21. Returns to London society sometime between 1910 and 1913. That was actually really helpful. 
Uh, <laughs> and, you know, since this is fiction, I don't have to make sure all of these dates are precisely correct. Um, I probably will look it up later, but that sounds about right to me. Um, let's say that the novella I'm writing takes place in 1923. How old would Tarzan be and how old would Sherlock Holmes be? In 1923, Tarzan would be about 35 years old. Okay, mid-30s is good, I like that. Uh, Sherlock Holmes' age is a bit more tricky to pin down, was purposely vague about his age. Most scholars estimate his birth year to be around 1854. That would make Holmes about 69 years old in 1923. Okay, that's good. Um, I want him to be in his 60s, that's good. Um, I like this. <laughs> Still potentially active in his older age, but likely starting to slow down a bit from his private detective days. Okay, so we have, um, I, I like this. I'm going to actually bring it back to the year 1920. Um, what are some important world events that happened around 1920? Please provide the dates. Right, we have ro prohibition. Uh, that's not, those are more like movements. What about specific events? Uh, oh, King Tut's tomb, 1922. Wasn't the Titanic? Hang on. When did the Titanic sink? Again, I could easily Google this. Oh, 1912. Okay, so that's a little bit earlier than I was thinking, but... Okay. All right, I've got an idea. All right, let's say that my story with Sherlock and Tarzan takes place in the late 1910s and involves some kind of conspiracy surrounding the sinking of the Titanic. Could you give me some ideas for what this conspiracy might look like and how a Lovecraftian cult could be involved? Question mark. All right. Let's see what it gives me now. All right, so a secretive cult was behind the sinking, sabotaging the ship by summoning a tentacled sea monster. Okay, maybe I'm getting too too much into this Lovecraftian thing. Um, the iceberg itself was no ordinary ice. It's not a bad idea. Uh, I, I don't necessarily want this to be that supernatural. Can you give me a few other options? Perhaps drawing on real world controversies surrounding the Titanic that I could use in my fictional setting. Let's not do anything supernatural for now. Um, 
It was an insurance scam. The ship was intentionally sailed into an ice field. German agents sabotaged it. Captain was bribed. Let's say, what about the materials used? I'm actually just, I'm going to do some Googling here. Um, why did the Titanic sink? We'll just start there and I'll have to find something. It's going to be a needle in a hay haystack here. All right. Titanic. I'm going to say facts. I see that coming up. Fascinating facts. And I'll just look through these and see if there's anything that I um, could use here. Two workers were killed during the build. That's useful. I'm going to make a note of that there. Okay. Um, I like this here. Uh, apparently there were 64, well, the Titanic was able to carry 64 lifeboats, uh, but it was only carrying 20. So that's something I could maybe like turn into a conspiracy. Um, and I want people to understand this is a fictional book here and it's going to be obviously fictional. So please don't think that I am promoting any conspiracies surrounding the Titanic. All right, so I've got a couple of things here. I think there's room for a controversy regarding the, or a conspiracy regarding the lifeboats. Um, and so, um, and the note that there were two workers killed during the build, we could um, expand on that. I'm sure they were built, that they died for, you know, in tragic accidents, um, but that's something we could maybe use here. So here, I'm just gonna say here are a few facts about the sinking of the Titanic. Give me 10 ideas for ways to incorporate these facts in this fictional conspiracy that Sherlock Holmes and Tarzan will need to uh, deal with. The novella should be set in the year, let's see, uh, Titanic sank in 1912. And when did it say Tarzan? So Tarzan returned to London society between 1910 and 1913. So let's say in the year, let's say 1915. So a little bit later, but um, please postulate the ages of Tarzan and Sherlock at this time. All right. Now let's see what it does. Oh, I forgot to give it the facts. Never mind. <laughs> and you can apologize and say, I've, I forgot to give you the facts about the Titanic. Please try again with these facts. Paste those in there. The cult sabotaged the lifeboats during construction, knowing many seats would go unused. Bribed inspectors overlooked the cult ma manipulating the lifeboat capacity numbers. The cult blackmailed the builders to cut corners, causing deadly accidents. Holmes discovered the cult masterminded the decision to not fill lifeboats to full capacity. Lifeboat Emergency drills were intentionally inadequate due to cult infiltration. And it did this weird thing where it's adding the ages here, uh, but they're different for each one. So I don't know what that's about. All right. 
let's say that the cult deliberately um, restricted the supply of lifeboats on the Titanic and that they were responsible for disrupting communication when the Titanic entered an area with dangerous um, icebergs. They may have already, or they may have also been responsible for making people think arrogantly that the Titanic could not be sunk. In this novella, Sherlock Holmes will discover this fact several years later in 1915. Now, can you help me brainstorm motives for the cult to take down the Titanic? Because kind of got an idea of how or like what they did to influence the sinking of the Titanic, but um, not necessarily why they did it. So let's see what it gives us there. assassinate a politician actually that could be a good one um, like that they were willing to take down an entire ocean liner in order to assassinate one person that's one option to eliminate a group of aristocrats to destroy documents or artifacts being transported that could undermine the cult's secret knowledge and history maybe as a mass human sacrifice to summon an ancient evil or fulfill an apocalyptic prophecy that's kind of what I was thinking in the back of my head, but it also kind kind of sounds dumb, like not not to belittle the the tragedy of the Titanic, but I feel like there would be other ways that you could do this. So to collect insurance money from sunk luxury vessels owned by cult opponents, to ignite public outrage and fear that they could leverage to strike a symbolic bro blow to distract the public from the cult's other covert activities by dominating news headlines, to retaliate against shipping lines, to create chaos. Um, I like, the two I like are to assassinate a politician and to destroy documents or artifacts. I think we could actually combine the two. Let's combine these two. Um, give me a few creative ways to combine these two ideas. Maybe the politician stole an item from them and and they sunk the Titanic in retaliation. Hmm, not sure I like that. Now well, let's see what it does. U.S. Senator obtains a dark ritual text from a turncoat cultist. Now that could be interesting. Okay, the idea is starting to take shape. So, I like the first, first option there. 
involving the US Senator. Let's also say that the Senator in addition to in addition to a dark ritual text also carried an idol with him. Actually, no, let's say um, that the senator had a copy of the Necronomicon, which in addition to being something the cult wants to get back, was also a source of darkness that may have increased the odds of um, the Titanic meeting a fatal end. Let's also say that there was a cultist aboard the Titanic who managed to survive and he took the copy of the Necronomicon back. Maybe I might I might change that to be uh, to make it be lost. Um, Uh, we can go with that. Um, with that in mind, can you sum up what everything we've got so far for this novella? Because I feel like we've got a lot of different things that I want to make sure we can put it more concisely. In 1915, Sherlock Holmes discovers the true story behind the 1912 sinking of the Titanic. A U.S. Senator obtained a rare copy of the Occult Necronomicon that was stolen from a secretive cult. This text revealed the, the cult's dark rituals and desire to summon otherworldly evil to prevent their secrets from getting exposed. The cult sabotaged the Titanic knowing the Senator booked passage with the dangerous tome. They restricted lifeboats and disrupted iceberg warnings to ensure the ship went down. Although the Senator perished, a cultist, cultist agent disguised as a passenger survived and retrieved the Necronomicon from the wreckage. The cult intended the mass casualties as a sacrifice to amplify the book's dark power. Tarzan joins Holmes to track down this sinister survivor and recover the Necronomicon before the cult can use it for evil. Their investigation leads them to discover the cult's involvement in, a dis in the disaster and the motivations behind it. Now with the truth known, Holmes and Tarzan must race against time to locate the missing copy of the dreaded book as the cult pursues its apocalyptic agenda in the shadows. The two heroes combined Tarzan's physical skills with Holmes' deductive reasoning to save the world from the conspirators who orchestrated the Titanic tragedy and now wield a tool of untold destruction and horror. All right, um, this is good, but pretty much I've just got the background here. Uh, and so I wanna actually get into the plot and going back to some of its initial ideas, I like the idea of some aristocratic family um, whose daughter has been kidnapped, and that kind of starts things, starts the ball rolling. Um, so, and I also think now that I'm thinking about it, that we we want the Necronomicon copy to be lost at some point uh, because I think that would just be. I don't know more interesting um, so all right I have a few additions let's not actually have the Necronomicon survive instead let's um, have it be lost along with the cultist disguised as a passenger aboard the Titanic. Let's also say that the novella should start out with should start out with the daughter 
let's say of the now deceased US senator being kidnapped while in London. The daughter's mother, wife of the senator, late senator, comes to Sherlock Holmes for help. Somewhere in the investigation, Sherlock should come across Tarzan, who is investigating the cult separately because uh, why? Why is Tarzan? Well, let um. Can you give me some ideas on why Tarzan is interested in the cult? Remember that this is after he returns from the jungle, because I, I know it's going to default to something jungle related, and that Tarzan is currently... Um, the owner of a large estate in England. I don't know exactly where, but I know that much. So as you can see, as I'm going through this, I'm, you know, a lot of it's very stream of consciousness. I kind of take what it gives me and I iterate and add a few things. I might brainstorm a particular part of the story, but as I'm going, I'm kind of piecing together this little story idea uh, and uh, putting together those pieces as we go along. All right, so I've got a couple of uh, new ideas here. Tarzan's own parents were killed years ago by followers of the cult. This one here makes some sense to me. Cult activities in the London criminal underworld are disrupting shipments from Tarzan's business interest in Africa. So I'm going to say I like this one. Can we also add a character who has um, defected from the cult who is being protected by Tarzan. Uh, with that in mind, can you summarize the story th that we've developed thus far. So it's got something here that's pretty cohesive and I like it. I'm just gonna add one more little thing here to improve upon the idea I'm gonna say. Let's say the daughter was kidnapped because she is the blood of the senator and the cultists think that through her sacrifice they might be able to retrieve the Necronomicon from the depths of the ocean. With that in mind, please redo your summary. All right, this is pretty good. I'm just gonna ask it to re like to rephrase the background information. Can you summarize the background information um, needed for everything that we determined about? how the cult was involved in the sinking of the Titanic and anything else I need to know uh, concerning the events before the start of the novella.
All right, so I've got a couple of things, some of which uh, we had not actually talked about. Like it gave me background on how the U.S. Senator got the copy of the Necronomicon and uh, things like that. Uh, I won't necessarily use all of it, but we've got the background behind the story and we've got the germ of an idea for the story itself. Uh, certainly not anything close to a synopsis yet, uh, but definitely moving in the right direction. So this has been it for today. I will see you in the next video where we will continue this process, probably talking about more world building and character building and things like that. I'll see you then.